Hi everyone, it is Kimber, the study abroad specialist here. And in today's video, we are gonna be moving along to the fifth and final part of the remarkable benefits of study abroad series. We're gonna be talking about the benefit of future life opportunities. So if you haven't had a chance to check out any other videos in this series, or if you're just finding us, I put together this series on the remarkable benefits of study abroad based on mainly the questions that I get all the time from the students that I advise, from parents, just from people who are interested in learning more about study abroad. They really want to dive deeper into what those benefits are. And of course, there are more than five benefits, but the ones that I put together in this series really kind of cover the main ones that were definitely important to me when I was a study abroad student. And I know that keep coming up when I talk to students <clears throat> once they finish their study abroad program. So in thinking about this series, definitely spend some time catching up on the videos. And please share these videos with other people that you know who are planning to study abroad soon. So the first benefit of future life opportunities that we're gonna talk about is the opportunity to take advantage of any time that you get to study abroad. So in thinking about the opportunities to study abroad, um, you know, as I've said, I don't think people even realize that even little kids that are like, I don't know, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, it doesn't matter. They have an opportunity to study abroad. Now, obviously it's a little bit more limited and they have lots of supervision because they're kids. Um, but you know, there, there's no sort of limit to when you can study abroad. And I'm definitely gonna cover that in future videos, sort of the alternatives, because I know that there's a lot of people who are older who may be working professionals. There's a lot of great opportunities now for them to do it. Um, and there's even people who have never set foot on a college campus that have ways to study abroad. Now it may not be called study abroad technically, or maybe not under a program that is necessarily called study abroad, but it, that is what it is. Um, but we're mainly talking about people who are, you know, in high school, in, you know, secondary school, in college and university, who sort of are the uh, traditional classic study abroad students. So, you know, the first thing that I would say is that one semester is better you know, two semesters is better than one, sorry. And that, you know, even longer is better than that because I am someone who has done kind of all of it. So it's like, I started out the very first time studying abroad in London, and then I got this great opportunity. Um, if you're interested in reading more about that, it is in a blog post that is in the description box, but I got this great opportunity. I was studying in London, doing an internship, um, through a program called AIFS, so the American Institute for Foreign Study. And I got approached by them to, they were like, we have more space on our Florence program. And in your application, you talked about how you really wanted to maybe spend some more time in Europe. And so, you know, got this great opportunity to spend the next semester in Florence. And it was not a part of my path. I mean, I said, maybe I wanted to like go there and spend a little bit of time there, but I didn't imagine I'd be, <laughs> you know, sort of spending a semester there, but it was, a great opportunity, maybe not the best fit for me. I'm always very upfront about that, that, you know, I am definitely a UK girl all the way, love London. I feel like it is definitely my second home. Um, whereas like with Florence, it was definitely much more of a steeper learning curve for me in terms of getting acclimated to the culture, the Italian culture, great people, great time overall, but it wasn't necessarily the best fit for me. Um, and then going back to the UK and spending nearly six years there, going to grad school twice there, working, interning, volunteering, um, getting involved with a lot of different things. And so anytime that you have the opportunity to study abroad, or even if it's not necessarily to study, if you're gonna be volunteering, if you're going to be doing whatever outside of just basic travel, I mean, yeah, it's great to just travel abroad. Like we all love that. And hopefully, you know, we're in 2021 right now. So hopefully we can all get back to doing a lot of that soon, but, I think that just thinking about the ways of, you know, if you can maximize your time abroad and your experience abroad, it's only going to help you in the future because 
it's something that, you know, people always want to hear about when you're doing interviews. It's something that is a great conversation starter, even if you're just at a party and people want to, you know, tell me something interesting about yourself. Well, you know, I spent a semester or two in Bali. Oh, wow. Like, you know, people are going to be so impressed by you. You could be like me and you actually <laughs> end up creating a company that is tailored to supporting and building a community for study abroad students every semester. So you don't know where this is going to take you. So I really recommend that, you know, if you have an opportunity, even if, you know, for some reason it is just during your junior year, maybe that's your junior year in college, undergrad, and then you end up getting to go back again in grad school, or maybe even as an adult, you get an, an opportunity to maybe do an international immersion program. There's so many different things. You can still consider that study abroad because you're learning something, you're in a different country, you're in a different culture. So definitely, you know, feel like this is setting you up for great future, you know, benefits and opportunities that can only help you succeed even further. So for number two, I want to talk a little bit more about the competitive edge, you know, that study abroad is going to give you in your career. And as we go along um, in further videos, I'm definitely going to probably create another series. I love series. If you've been on this channel anytime, um, you kind of known that. But I think that they're very helpful because we're able to sort of tackle different pieces. And so with the sort of cre um, competitive edge to your career, it's going to be something important. We sort of touched on it in the question before where, you know, it's definitely something that stands out for people, um, you know, in thinking about applying for jobs. You'd be surprised, like overall, and this is a um, statistic from 2018. Now, <laughs> based on where we are right now, it's probably even lower than that, obviously. Um, but only in total about 20 to 25 percent of students worldwide study abroad while they're in school. Um, and, you know, that's pretty believable. I mean, if you think about it, it's probably like maybe out of the 20 to 25 percent, maybe 15 to maybe 18, maybe even 20 percent of them are maybe students that are not from the U.S. And then you have the rest of us, um, because we know that Overall, Americans tend to be behind the curve when it comes to sort of doing things internationally and traveling internationally compared to other people. But um, you're still in a really exclusive club of people who, you know, even if you, you know, come from a family where everyone has studied abroad, you're still in a really small exclusive club. So it's kind of cool to think about the fact that, you know, even though there are millions of kids that do it every year, the sort of total compared to people who are actively, you know, a high school student, a secondary student, a college student, a grad student, you're still in a really small minority of people. And so this is going to give you a competitive edge in a lot of ways. Now, again, even if you feel like it's something that's much more common, there's still ways that you can spin it. Because if you have that on your resume, people are going to want to hear about it. So it's like, it could be great for situational questions. I know that when you know, I was working for, you know, companies and would have to do interviews. I used a lot of my experiences from abroad, not just because it made me, you know, like stand out a little bit more in that way, but because a lot of it was sort of showing, well, you know, I was able to tackle this in an entirely different country where I had to learn the different rules and the different, you know, sort of way that they do things. And so that was very encouraging to people to hear that. And so I definitely think that no matter what your sort of area of study is or what area you feel like you want to go in professionally, that you can use and set up yourself really well to sort of think about your study abroad experience, your study abroad time away, to factor it in and give yourself that edge that is only going to get steeper. I mean, as we sort of continue to move into this sort of globalized world, and yes, I know a lot of people myself included, have some <laughs> not uh, best opinions about that, but it really is sort of a world where, you know, there's so much information moving fast. People are so connected in so many different ways. There's so many new opportunities for people, no matter where they are, and especially now coming out of 2020 and in 2021, where, you know, a lot of people now are just working online. A lot of that is here to stay. And so you may have an opportunity to find a job that is in a brand new country, a brand new experience. And if you are someone who has traveled abroad and done that, that could give you a leg up over someone who has not experienced a foreign culture um, before. And so you definitely want to consider that so that you can set yourself up to have the best opportunities in the future and move ahead and be great at whatever you plan to do.
And so for the last point, I just want to point out that you are now a student uh, study abroad ambassador. So if you haven't had a chance to check out the Live Study Learn Abroad Association, that is my company, you can click into the description box below to learn more about it. And there's also a video on uh, my channel as well about it, but it is an online exclusive members club for study abroad students. So within this members club, it's great because we open uh, once a semester. So um, we're gonna be opening in August of 2021 for students who are gonna be hopefully um, mostly around the world studying abroad in August for the fall and winter season of 2021 and then so on and so forth for spring and so on and so forth down the line. But um, it's a great place to connect with people because what I always like to say is it's basically like what I would have wanted when I studied abroad. And I think that's how a lot of companies come about, right? Because you feel like, well, this is something that I think that I would have wanted. And it's something that I know a lot of students are interested in because yeah, sure. You can go on, you know, whatever tech platform and sort of find people that may be doing it, or maybe you have friends that are doing it or whatever. But I feel like the community that we have been able to create at Live, Study, Learn is great because you get a chance to connect with students from all around the world who are also studying abroad during the same time as you. So you may get lucky and maybe you have, you know, 10 people who are in the platform who are also studying in Germany. Maybe you can connect with them, um, you know, and meet up and do different things. Or even if you, you know, you have someone who they came here to study in the US during the fall, but then you're over in India studying in the fall, but you're all experiencing the same thing. And so you want a place where you can sort of collaborate, sometimes commiserate, but also learn and get the support that you need. That is why I am there. That is why, you know, all of us that contribute to my online community are there for you. And so definitely check that out and learn how you can join. Um, but the other thing that I think that is important to remember is just that being that study abroad ambassador, that is who you are now. So, and it's gonna depend again on what type of environment you're in or you know where you're going to school, but people are gonna wanna know, they're going to want to hear from you what your experience was like. I know that particularly when I had my first time abroad, you know, after I came back home, like anytime that someone wanted to do it, they would contact me, you know, and they want to know specifically like, you know, what do I need? What do I need to pack? What do I need to sort of think about? Here are the things. And that's really kind of what spawned me creating my blog, um, which is anchormeabroad.com. Um, I created that back in 2014 and then grew it um, and then just started thinking about different things. And that's what ultimately led me to creating Live, Study, Learn. But even just in your own life, like, you know, people are going to want to know, like, even if they're just not interested in studying abroad, they may be traveling somewhere and they're like, well, you know, you just studied in Switzerland. I've never been there. Like, can you tell me more about it? So you definitely are now this ambassador and you have this knowledge of this place. And that can be really powerful because the other part of that is, and we've talked about this in other videos, is sort of being able to serve as someone who interjects and sort of breaks some of the stereotypes and the sort of preconceived notions, right? Because we all have them. And depending on what country you're coming from, you may think one thing about different country, you know, based on what you read online or what you saw in a YouTube video. Um, again, you know, it's great that you're watching me on YouTube and all the others, uh, but don't rely on everything you see on the internet. I don't think I need to explain that to you. Um, but it's great because once you return home, you get an opportunity to sort of, maybe you're in casual conversation and someone is talking about something in a very generalized way. And you're like, well, actually, that's not how they do it. That's just maybe something that was made up in Hollywood. It's not real. Um, and so I think that it's just a great way for you to become you know, a great steward, a great person um, who's much more well-rounded and informed. And then that way, you sort of serve as an ambassador in a way for the host country as well, because you're able to sort of really speak about it from a firsthand perspective, not just something that you read in a book. And it, so it's going to be great because it's encouraging to people because as people move around, as they travel, as they themselves may even choose to study abroad, they know that they have someone who's already had the experience and that can just kind of connect with them and really kind of give them some guidance and give them some encouragement as they go through their own journey um, for a semester away or longer. 
Okay, and so that is it for the video and for the series. I had so much fun in particular putting this together because again, I love talking about the benefits of study abroad. And as I said before, this is only five of them. There are hundreds out there and I would love to continue exploring those. Now, if you are planning to study abroad, I wanna hear more from you. Leave a comment below, tell me more about what are some of the sort of things that you're looking forward to what are some of your goals when you uh, plan to study abroad? And also, when are you planning to study abroad? I know obviously right now it is May, 2021. So depending on where you are, that may not be a reality for you until maybe in the fall, but what are your plans for um, the end of 2021, 2022 and beyond? Leave a comment below and tell me. Also to go ahead and like this video and share this video with someone else that you know who's interested in studying abroad. Thank you so much for sticking with this series. I hope that you can catch up on the rest of the videos. And I will see you next Friday for a brand new uh, video on something entirely different. I look forward to seeing you very soon.